Hello everyone, my name is Ken Blackburn. I'm the Executive Director of the Campbell River Arts Council and I'm also the Program Manager for the Museum at Campbell River. And today we're in the study at the Hague Brown House and I'm here with the writer Libby King who has been our 2020 artist in resident at the Walter Morgan Studio which is uh, attached with the Sybil Andrews Cottage in Willow Point. Uh, Libby with Orlin Hansen were our first uh, artist residencies uh, that we have started in this year of 2020, but because of COVID, uh, Chan's uh, plans had to change dramatically. Uh, it would be unusual for us to have a writer, for example, mm -hmm. but it was a kind of a great idea, I think, this year, Libby. So let's have a chat with Libby okay. and see what's what. Sure. Um, so let's start. Libby, with uh, some background, how did you get into writing? I got into writing, I think, in the same way as a lot of people kind of do. I started off with a notebooking habit, and uh, I compulsively wrote in my notebook over a period of many years, not really knowing what I was doing or why I was doing it. I'm not sure whether it was cathartic, like just trying to make sense of the world or, um, or something else, but it was just kind of this long-standing habit and, and I think that a lot of people have, have that. Like there are a lot of people in Canberra River now who have a long-standing notebooking habit and it's kind of where do you go from there? And... Now, now uh, do you mean like journaling? Kind of, okay. yeah. Yeah, I guess journaling. Some people call it journaling, um, diarising. Uh, I call it notebooking because it can be anything. It's not necessarily like journaling about my life. It could be just writing little snippets of stories or observations, describing scenes that kind of thing. And then I moved to Canberra River and in the little Canberra River mirror, there was an advertisement for a writing class at uh, Sybil Andrews Cottage. And my partner cut it out and said, you might be interested in doing this. I think I contacted you after that, I had a little chat and I went down and started doing these courses. And um, Little did I know how lucky we were because Matt Rader, who is just an amazing poet and well, honestly, though I don't really know much about poetry, but he's certainly an amazing short story writer and um, a renowned poet. <laughs> um, and he was doing the course and I was really lucky because his method of teaching really gelled with me. I, I'm not someone who wants to kind of um, understand all the different types of terms around writing or what you can and can't do, exposition, v passive voice. I'm interested in the evoca how, how the writing evokes various feelings. And he was a, a writer that could do that for me. And I think that really importantly when it comes to how did I get into writing is getting knowledge and information. And he was a really good teacher, but also he shared information with me that I had no idea about. I thought that writing was notebooks in coffee shops and I knew that I read stories, but I didn't have any concept of how those two things merged. And I remember in one of the last sessions, he put all these literary magazines on the table and he told us that that's where you get stories published. And I remember putting that in my, my head and when I, I, I guess then I had a kind of aim, like I could finish a story and I could submit it to a literary magazine and it took a very long time. My first one took a long time to get accepted and then it took like a year and a half to get published after it was accepted. But that was kind of the beginning. That's what turned it from just writing to writing something that could be shared and could be part of our cultural kind of milieu, I guess. Mm -hmm. And is that something you're, you're continuing to do? Are, yeah. are you submitting to magazines all the time? Or? Yeah, you know, at the moment I'm working on this larger piece, a, a novel, and so I don't, I'm not really focused on writing short stories, which is what I've been writing for those pieces. Um, but that kind of gets to the, the next part, which is how then I got this Canada Council grant, which was again about information. I remember being at the Victoria um, Writers' Festival down in Victoria, and there was um, a writer there, Doretta Lau, who wrote a great um, short story collection called How Does a Single Blade of Grass Thank the Sun? And she is really awesome with sharing information as well. And she said at that conference that you have to have four publications to be eligible for Canada Council grants. And I was like, oh, wow, I've got one. Like, maybe I could get more. And um, 
that kind of gave me, I guess, another goal to get four publications so that I could start putting in applications and and um, being in a position where I could focus on larger pieces of work. Yeah. And so you, your grant application was successful with the Canada Council yeah. and now you are working on this larger piece yeah. of work. So what's, how's that going? It's good. Um, it's certainly different. You know, I think that one of the reasons why the Canada Council um, provides funds for these kind of projects is because they take so much focus and discipline and it's difficult to uh, keep all the different parts of it in your head at the best of times, let alone when you're then going into work and, and um, having those kind of interruptions. So it's been a huge blessing for me and I'm still working um, kind of less than a day a week at the um, Health Network where I've been working for a while and they've been really awesome in terms of supporting me doing this um, but keeping me kind of semi-involved. And um, yeah, the, the Canada Council grant, like it blew me away. I wasn't expecting to get it. I was just kind of doing the next thing that I knew that I kind of could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I applied like a month after I got my fourth publication. I, I was like, woohoo! The day that I got that fourth publication, I went on there You're and eligible like now, got right? my got myself validated. That took a while. That took about a month to get your profile validated, um, and then after that, you can start applying. And that's what I did. Like, well, yeah. congratulations because they Thanks. are not easy grants to get. Yeah. And so good on you. Yeah. So well, what? A lot of that though is information. It's about knowing how to do it. And I know that for me, I would never have known those things if I hadn't kind of found myself with the right people. So I really encourage other writers who are wanting to do that to get information and kind of learn from people who have been doing it before. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's, there's a lot of funding out there but you have to go find it and, yeah, yeah. and, and, and be very um, precise in what it is they're asking for yeah. too. So. And there's also a culture that you have to get involved with. I think Certainly for me as a writer, I don't know what artists are like, but um, writers are quite reclusive. We work alone, like we collaborate sometimes, but I know that for me, my most comfortable space is completely alone. And one of my favorite authors, Carlo Knusko, he talks about how just having a cat in the house is too much of a distraction. <laughs> like that's how kind of insular many writers are. Um, but to be eligible for these things or to uh, get your work into publications, you kind of have to participate in a culture and and that's part of the the process. For me anyway, that's been an important part mm -hmm. of the process. Yeah, yeah. So t what, what, do you want to just talk a little bit about the, the is it a novel, you're calling it's it a novel? It's a novel, a novel, yeah. novella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's about, it's really tricky to talk about. We talked about this before, how tricky it is. I mean, uh, it's, um, it's something that I've been wanting to work on for a long time, but I've known that I couldn't start until I had the kind of space and time to pull it all together. Uh, I'm in that process of pulling it together. A lot of it is in these notebooks. Like I've been writing this story for a really long time and it's pretty interesting to go back excavating uh, these, these notes and sometimes there's so much more there than I remember and sometimes like there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that I wrote a whole thing and actually it's just three lines, like tube, St. John's Wood, funny. <laughs> it doesn't really evoke like what I was planning to do. So there's a lot of work to do in those contexts. But um, but it's really been an excavation project, looking at at these different stories, working out how to novels are subtle. You know, they they um, they're working in all the different all the different scenes. They're moving towards something, um, and and to be able to put that information into a scene without kind of saying what the end is uh, takes a lot of time. I saw a really interesting impressionist painting at Somerset House in London a few years ago. I wish I could remember what it's called. But there's a woman in a bar, do you know it? And then she's looking out at the patrons. It's very famous. Oh, yeah, Dega. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I yeah. Can't, it, the title is the name of the bar. Uh, right. But, but it's yeah. a Degas, yeah. Yeah, and I found that so inspiring because you see this picture of her and you think it's just someone at the bar, but it's when you, when you focus out from her face and you see the world that she's inhabiting, then you see that she's unhappy, desolate. Mm -hmm. Like there's this other story that wouldn't be there. And 
I think about that painting a lot when I'm writing that that you have these kind of close up these miniatures but together it has to make a larger story so that's what I'm kind of okay. working on you're sifting your way sifting through sifting my way yeah, yeah. and the do you want to talk at all about what the basic story is? Uh, it's a tricky thing because, you know, I've heard um, it said before that if you talk too much about a work in progress, then you kind of get the satisfaction of having done it before you do it. Like I, I'm trying to kind of save the story part for uh, the work. And then once I've put it in the work, I feel like I'll be able to talk about it. But I'm worried that if I talk about it too much, then I'll feel like I've told it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to give away the end. I've of, heard no, of no, that, though. So, I've heard that this is, you does know, she die? superstition. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's a question. <laughs> Good one. I think it's Maybe. the question of every novel. <laughs> Maybe. <isn't it? laughs> Do they die? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I think one of the things uh, I wanted to really ask you about was mm. um, writing in different places, mm. because I know uh, you worked in the study that we're mm -hmm. in now for a, for a while last fall. And then when we were talking about the artist in residence at the Walter Morgan studio, which is, you know, kind of more designed for sculpture, or mm -hmm. more designed for visual arts, the idea of a writer mm -hmm. using the space mm -hmm. um, during a, a pandemic yeah. and with isolation, mm. I thought, hmm, might work. But does it work? Um, is this something that's inspirational? What does it do to work in, in different places other than that sort of secure mm. uh, isolation that you might have in your house? Mm. Well, for me, being able to work out of where I live is really important. Uh, or just to work in the world. Like I've always spent a lot of time working in coffee shops or um, even working like not so much like this is one of the things about the shed like I often think like I'd like to work at the beach but it's kind of impractical whereas somewhere like the shed is a perfect combination of being able to be practical and have all the tools that you need to actually do what you're supposed to be doing and at the same time like it's an amazing place to be the the biggest issue is the distractions like the bird life is crazy <laughs> Uh, the first day that I went there, I had to stop counting the things that I was spotting, like so many eagles, so many vultures. There was a big vulture thing going on. Uh, a lot of crows, um, herons. It's a busy place. Uh, and it's exciting. I can see why Sybil Andrews has her property on, had her property on the ocean and then here we are at Hague Brown where like we've got the river just behind us it flows all the time like it hasn't stopped for a really long time and mm -hmm. hopefully it's not going to stop um they're both really beautiful places where artists have been working and I I don't know I mean there's a connection what the connection is I'm not entirely sure but I know that when I worked here I um had a number of really big breakthroughs actually and part of that's to do with the amazing library and the bookshelf which fits with some of my story is set um, in the middle of the 20th century kind of before I started reading books but I know that some of the books that are in this library are relevant to that story I found a couple when I worked here and had a had a good little read of them mm -hmm. um, and it's also been good for me the shed because I was planning to be out of town like part of my grant um, would have I was planning to use some of that grant to, for example, go to London, where some of this story is set in London, some of it is set in Australia, which I'm Australian and I kind of have a better feel for that. Um, and I do have a feel for some things in London. I lived there for a while, but actually I could have done with a bit of time there to kind of look at the things that I hadn't ever really thought about. So I'm interested to see how my imagination manages to fill those gaps and whether I do that well or mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well it's one of the things that drove just the concept of having a writer in the right. in the shed to begin with was the fact that there's no travel yeah. everything's kind of locked down and isolation and it was you know because the the residency is designed to be kind of open public right. workshops and right. talks yeah and visitor drop-ins you know to be able to see an artist kind of at work but I did get a lot of drop-ins you did? Yeah, sure. It's a pretty public place. You open up those beautiful doors onto the ocean and uh, yeah, 
people come by. And they've been Who are you? What's curious, going on? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're close, close to the Seawalk there. I'm sure. Yeah. Too, and uh, people yeah. are. Uh, it's a public, um, a publicly owned piece of land, and yeah. people are curious about what's going on there. Yeah. And I appreciated it. I met some interesting people, and everyone's very respectful of the space, but um, also curious about about what's going on. Yeah. And. Um, you know, it ended up being really good for me because because I couldn't get out of that house to go to coffee shops or anything. Like to be anywhere else with my laptop, it was a great place that I could go and do work and not like literally be at home alone, which I know a lot of people have been dealing with. But it was mm -hmm. nice to have some respite from that. For sure. mm -hmm. And did, did you find the environment done? like, for example, for Sybil, uh, mm. it was so much a part of her work because she was about yes. motion. You know, and, and she was about the power of nature and, mm. uh, you know, with the tides and the winds. But, of course, she would be there all four seasons, too, and, and see the motion of the area. But did you find that it was conducive to focus on writing? Or was it good to be focus, focusing on everything else but writing? Well, it was a challenge because the story I'm writing is not set here. And while I love writing stories about this place and it's come up in a lot of um, my stories. The story I'm currently working on is not set in, in Canberra River or Vancouver Island and so I had to be quite kind of careful about that. Like I I wanted to write about that that space and about what I was seeing but I had to kind of get myself into uh, different places. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that was a problem though but it certainly like it drew me in like I had to stop myself from from doing those other kinds of work, which would have been more immediately satisfying, but mm -hmm. perhaps not satisfied the requirements of my grant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just a minor just detail. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe a, a short story, maybe, yeah. maybe just, or even just an essay. Yeah, uh, well, of, yeah. The thing with those things is that they just pop up. Like I yeah. find that I can't really decide that I'm gonna do those things because when I try, it doesn't, mm. it's not really good. Yeah. Like I have to, it has to come and then, oh, okay, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's kind of, it's interesting, that whole artistic process. And I think that half of it, and this is maybe what Sybil got out of that location and Hey Brown here and certainly what I got there, it's kind of opening yourself up to stories and to connections and being willing to, to be able to hear the, the stories that are out there and be in a space where you can channel them, like put them into words. I think that for me seems like the, the trickiest mm -hmm. thing to, to do. Like it's kind of possible if you let yourself. And it's so easy to, I think that we are all seeing connections, stories, all these beautiful things. And it can be tricky in our day-to-day -day lives to make space for turning that into a, a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, well, being at the Hague Ground property, it's watching a river flow. Yeah. You know, or yeah. it reminds me of looking at fires too. Totally. You just sort of stare into them, but they are a very meditative kind of process, and and your mind is allowed to wander. And sometimes yeah. when it wanders, it, it's more receptive, I think, to things that are kind totally. of in the air. Whereas when we're exactly. busy and locked into our thing, we're blocking all of those yeah. potential inspirations out. We're not mm -hmm. letting them in. You know, so. Yeah, it's true. And actually, when I did that course with Matt, he gave us an assignment to do a short story. It's the only assignment. Oh, I think we had a few, actually. But anyway, it was the main assignment was to write a short story. And I remember walking the Canyon View Trail, which is just up a little ways further and a really popular walking trail here in Canberra River. And it was on that. I mean, that story itself is nothing to be shared or anything. It was, It's a cute little thing, but nothing kind of fancy. But it was on a little walk around there that that story kind of, hmm, that's... Na nature's amazing like that and mm -hmm. and all the connections in nature are um, interesting I mean here in Canberra River we're so lucky that we have access to not only beautiful forests the ocean like the mountains I know. parks wildlife it's crazy. yeah and just kind of a last question um, when you're writing mm. are you doing a lot of reading do you find that reading is is something that helps you to write definitely so and so it's kind of an ongoing definitely and and do you find that you're reading things within the genre that you're writing or do you prefer to mm. kind of free range and 
and graze farther afield with things. Yeah, I free range. Or I write, read books about writing, which I didn't realize until after the Matt Rader course um, that writers communicate with each other through books, not just stories, but like kind of, you know, I want to call them a how-to guide, but they're not really how-to in the sense of how to write a story. They're how to be an artist, like mm -hmm. how to get yourself into these headspaces that are really vital for creating art. And I find them kind of fun. Like I, in the morning, if I'm struggling, then reading about someone else's struggles mm -hmm. <laughs> and how that they managed to put it into something that made sense. Because the, the subject matter is almost irrelevant. It's the art that you put into it the and, the, and the process of finishing it so that another person like me in the morning can consume it. That's, um, that's kind of the, the tricky part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I read a lot in, in the morning and in the evening. Yeah, yeah, and in terms of the things, I definitely don't read. I try to avoid anything which is similar to what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. Because you can really go down, you just find you yourself can. kind of wanting to be that person and write like that. Oh, amazing writer! I want to write just like that, and mm -hmm. it's not good for you. No, you got to write your own way. Yeah, yeah. And that's a very, that's a very Sybil lesson too. Oh, yeah? she was like that as an art teacher, oh, very really? much. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to copy other people's styles. I don't want you paying attention to other people. You're gonna yeah. find your own style. Right. You know, so yeah. she had to work hard at doing that, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, if I think of her time period of, you know, First World War. Mm. She was a welder in the First World War. Really? And then, yeah. And then she did architectural dry points for her bread and cheese, as she called it, you know, between the wars and then Second World War. Uh, yeah, she was a very frugal, hardworking, mm. yeah, hardworking, I think very strong lady. Yeah. So, time period, uh, do you have a, is it the grant that's going to determine? Are you trying what? to like freak me out? <laughs> you trying to scare what, me? What, what um, do, you, do you have a horizon line in mind right for now, when you're going to finish? Right now, I um, am trying to get over the summit. My partner was chopping wood for our wood stove recently and he said, I think I'm, I think I'm past the halfway mark. And I was like, oh, that's what I want to be. So, I'm not at the halfway mark yet. I don't feel myself coming around the other corner, but that's my next goal is to see the first half of this draft and feel like that's done and that I'm kind of moving towards the end but I'm not there yet not yet okay. but that's the that's the goal yeah well technically the time. the residency is coming to a close yeah. with the Art and Earth Festival mm -hmm. uh, we hope to put this interview out as part of the festival on the 25th 26th 27th of September um, but you are welcome to come visit through the fall. It gets cold out there. I know. It's not necessarily a, a, a good fall winter location to write. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, anything else? What? Well, I just want to thank you oh. and thank the Arts Council for hosting me in the shed mm -hmm. and for giving me that opportunity and that beautiful uh, place to be. I really appreciate being part of a community. I know that like I said earlier about writers being alone and, and I think a lot of artists are like that, uh, but it, it's, it means a lot to me to connect with the Arts Council and with other writers, with Orland, and just to be part of a community. I think mm -hmm. that that is something that I'm always seeking and um, the Arts Council is just a wonderful venue and resource for doing those things. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, well, thanks, Libby. Yeah, I, and I think ultimately that's its intent. Well, what we would really like to see come from both the cottage and uh, and the, the shed, uh, Walter Morgan Studio, is to have it be a, a gathering spot mm -hmm. for the arts, for creative people to be able to come and exchange. Yeah. And when we can get back to audiences and, and having people, then you know, it'd be more easily facilitated with workshops and with talks and discussion groups mm -hmm. and things. So And just yeah. gatherings. You know, sometimes we underestimate just meeting people and how important that is. Yeah. It's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're learning it. I guess quickly so. Right last now. Hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyways, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For your time today. And uh, it was a pleasure yeah, to have you. And thanks. It was really good to at least keep the conversation of the residency going yeah. rather than just shut down yeah. and do nothing. I think that we found a, a, a really good 
a kind of way to do that with the combination of a writer and Orlin mm -hmm. Hansen, who's a sculptor. You know, yeah. what a strange combination, yeah, but, it but it worked well. So, yeah, thanks, Great. Libby. Thanks, Ken. Okay, and thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll sign off with that.